now we will return our attention to the circuit compartment of the transmitter. The amplifier card can be removed by first removing the three holding screws and then the heat sink screw. The screw is captive to the board. A 632 screw inserted in the rev nut on the card will assist in the removal of the amplifier. Pull as evenly as possible on the amplifier card and remove it from the housing. This is the header assembly board. It is permanently attached to the sensor module and cannot be removed from it. Like the other circuit boards, it is equipped with a 632 rev nut. It can be removed from the contact pins and moved out of the way for removal of the other circuit boards. With the header board disconnected, a resistance and or capacitance check can be made on the sensor module. Place a jumper across pin contacts 1 and 2 on the header board. Connect an ohmmeter between the jumper and the sensor housing. The resistance should be greater than 10 mega ohms. This is between one capacitor plate and the sensing diaphragm. If a capacitance measurement is made, the capacitance between the jumper and the sensor housing should be approximately 150 picofarads. To measure from the sensing diaphragm to the other capacitor plate, jumper pins 3 and 4 and repeat the process. The measurements should again be either over 10 mega ohms or 150 picofarads. This is the calibration circuit board. It is held in place by the three standoff screws. The upper right hand standoff must be tight because it provides the case ground for the electronics section. This is the linearity adjustment. It is factory set and should need no further adjustments. The newer transmitters besides having the linearity adjustment on the amplifier board instead of the calibration board also have a dampening adjustment. The adjustment permits the dampening of rapid pulsations in the pressure source. The zero and span adjustments fit into bayonet type connectors on the calibration board. These bayonets must be perpendicular to the board before it can be removed. After removing the three standoff screws and inserting a 632 screw in the rivnut. nut, the calibrating board can be removed. These are the bayonet type adjustments on the zero and span potentiometers. This is the connector circuit board assembly. It is held in place with two standoff screws. To remove the sensor or module, remove the process flanges. Loosen the lock nut between the sensor module and the electrical housing. Unscrew the sensor making sure that the wires are not damaged. Remove the lower standoff on the connector circuit board in order to get it out of the way. Carefully work the header assembly through the hole and remove the sensor module from the housing. No further disassembly of the sensor unit can be made. The zero and span screws are held in place with C-clamps. They must be in place or the explosion proof construction will be invalidated. The transmitter is reassembled in the reverse order to which we have disassembled it. 
at least five threads must be fully engaged in the housing or the explosion proof construction will be invalidated. To reassemble the sensor body, inspect and carefully position the O-rings around the isolating diaphragms. Properly orient the flanges and first tighten the bolts finger tight. Then diagonally and evenly tighten the bolts to approximately 30 foot-pounds. When reinstalling the amplifier board, the heat sink screw should be started and made snug before the three holding screws are installed. Now work exercise three in your workbook. Several different arrangements may be used for calibrating the transmitter. The DC power must be applied to the signal terminals. A milliammeter can be connected in series with the signal or power leads. A milliammeter may be connected across the test terminals or a precision resistor may be connected across the test terminals and the output read with a millivoltmeter across the resistor. The resistor must have a low resistance, preferably 2.5 ohms or less. If the resistance is too high, some current will leak through the protecting diode across the test terminals and the calibration will be incorrect. Do not use the local indicator for calibrating purposes. It is accurate to only plus or minus 2%. We will calibrate this transmitter for a 0 to 150 inches of water range. We will place the milliammeter in series with the signal leads. With the low side of the transmitter open to the atmosphere and no signal to the high pressure side, adjust the zero for four milliamperes output. Apply 100 inches of water pressure to the high pressure process connection. Adjust the span for 20 milliamperes output. There is some interaction between the span and zero. Recheck the zero and the span until both are correct. A small negative span shift is caused by high static pressures. This would usually be insignificant. The exception would be where large volumes of product were bought or sold at relatively high pressures. For example, the correction constant for a 0 to 100 inch range is 0 0.000010. If a 4 to 20 milliampere transmitter is to operate at 1250 psig, the correction factor would be 20 minus 4 or 16 times 0 0.000010 times 1250 equals 0 0.20 milliamperes. To correct for the static pressure, the transmitter should be calibrated for a 4 to 20.20 .20 milliampere output for the 0 to 100 inch input. The static pressure correction is covered in the specific instruction books. Normally, it is of no concern to the technician. When needed, instructions should be furnished by the engineering or technical division. However, the technician should be aware of it, as most all transmitters are subject to a static pressure span shift. As we have said before, 
the Rosemount gauge pressure transmitter is almost identical to the differential pressure type. The exception is the low pressure flange. A leak to the outside is provided through these holes which allow the low pressure side to reference to the atmosphere. This gauge pressure transmitter can be converted to a PSID transmitter simply by installing a differential pressure type flange on the low pressure side. These ranges are available in the pressure model. Note that they have the same 6 to 1 span ratio as the differential pressure types. Exclusive of the impulse piping and the signal wiring to the control center, which we have made no attempt to cover in this lesson, the Rosemount transmitter can be divided into four basic components. These are the sensing element, the amplifier board, the calibration board, and the connection board. These boards are located in the circuit compartment. We have already shown how to check out the sensor module. If the isolating diaphragms are dirty, they can be wiped with a soft rag. Do not use any chlorine or acid solutions. The best way to check the circuit cards is to replace them with ones known to be good. When there is trouble with the output reading, make sure the pins are all making good contact on the circuit boards. If there is power at the signal leads and no output, the diode across the test terminals may be blown. This can be tested by placing a jumper across the test terminals. If this makes the output normal, the diode is blown. If the milliampere output stays at maximum or anywhere else along the range, and the zero and span adjustments have no effect on the output, the calibration card is suspect. When checking the signal leads or the sensor leads for continuity, grounds or shorts, do not use a high voltage mega. Do not use any voltage higher than 100 volts. The reason is because the sensor is capacitance coupled to ground. If the transmitter output responds OK, but will not go full range, it could be the DC supply voltage is not sufficiently high for the load. If the signal wires are mistakenly connected to the test terminals, it will blow the diode across these terminals. The loop can be made operable by properly connecting the signal leads to the signal terminals and placing a jumper across the test terminals. For proper circuit operation, always be sure that pin number 8 is properly grounded to the case. It provides the case ground for the electronics section. One thing we did not mention previously is that a sealing compound should be applied to the upper surface of this lock nut before it is tightened. This prevents moisture from entering the circuit compartment. Be sure the compartment covers are screwed snug against the O-rings and that all conduit entries are properly sealed. If properly installed and tested, the transmitter should give accurate and dependable service. Now work exercise four in your workbook.